In this video, we'll learn how to draw a lemon in Inkscape. Let's begin by pressing the E key to switch to the Circles and Ellipses tool. Let's create a large ellipse. Now let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog by clicking this button up here. Let's give the ellipse an orange fill. Now let's create a small ellipse at the left side of the big one. Next, let's switch to the Select tool by pressing the S key. Hold Shift and click the big ellipse to add it to the selection. Open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button. And click this button here to align them horizontally. Next, we want to round the corners where the two ellipses meet. First, with both ellipses still selected, let's turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. Now let's open the Path Effects dialog by going to Path, Path Effects. Then click the plus button down here and choose corners fillet slash chamfer here. Now because the only corners of this path are these two that we want to round, we can just start raising the radius parameter in here to round them. Okay, that should be good. So let's finalize the effect by going to path, object to path. The next thing we'll do is cut off this half of the path. For this, we can switch to the squares and rectangles tool by pressing the R key, then create a rectangle starting near the center line of the path and completely overlapping the right side. Now we can switch to the select tool and select them both, then go to path, difference. Okay, now we're going to create a circle that is the same width and height as the height of this path. If we're using Inkscape 1.2, an easy way to do this is to click this arrow at the top right for the snap controls, check enable snapping, and toggle on alignment snapping here. Now we can switch to the Circles and Ellipses tool. Move the cursor here until we get this line going from the cursor to the top of the path. Hold Ctrl and click and drag down until we get a line from the bottom of the path to the cursor, then release. Now we can turn snapping back off. Next, let's switch to the Select tool and duplicate the circle with Ctrl D. Let's make the duplicate white. Then hold Shift and Ctrl and scale it down some. Let's duplicate again. Switch to the Color Picker tool by pressing the D key. Click the orange circle, switch back to the Select tool, and scale down the circle while holding Shift and Control. Okay, next we're going to separate this inner circle into segments. To do this, let's first switch to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a long, thin rectangle down the center. Let's switch back to the Select tool and Shift-click one of the circles, then in the Align and Distribute dialog, with the last selected chosen in the Relative to box, Let's align them vertically and horizontally. Okay, let's select just the rectangle and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Then click the duplicate to get the rotation handles. Hold Ctrl and rotate it counterclockwise until it says in the status bar that it's at negative 45 degrees. Let's duplicate again and rotate it negative 45 degrees again. And one more time. Okay, now let's hold Shift and select the other three rectangles. Let's do a union by pressing Ctrl plus. Then let's hold Shift and select the inner circle, then do a difference with Ctrl minus. Alright, now we want to round all the corners of these segments. We can do this again with the corners path effect by switching to the path effects dialog, clicking the plus button, then clicking corners again. Let's increase the radius parameter. Okay, now let's select all of the parts of this lemon slice, turn snapping back on, hold Ctrl, and drag all of these objects over here until we get a red line either from the top corner or the bottom corner of the big path to the center of the slice. Let's turn snapping back off, then hold shift and use either the left or the right scale handle to scale these objects in some so it looks like it's in perspective. Let's select just the segment path and the white ellipse. Hold control and move them to the right a bit. Okay, next let's select this first path we made here and duplicate it. Let's give it a yellow fill. Now we want to scale this down some, but if we hold Ctrl and Shift and do it, it doesn't scale down evenly. So we can undo that, then go to Path, Inset, which scales down all points of a path evenly. We can use the shortcut for Inset, which is Ctrl plus the 9 key at the top of the keyboard, to do it quickly. Okay, now we want to cut out this part of the path where the front should be visible. To do this, we can select the orange ellipse here and duplicate it, then Shift click the yellow path, and do a difference with the control minus. All right, let's give the lemon a shadow and highlight. For the shadow, let's duplicate this yellow path and make it a bit darker.
Then duplicate again. Make this one any color. Then hold Control and move it up some. Now let's hold Shift and click the path here. Then do a difference with Control minus. To get rid of this part here, we can go to Path, Break Apart. Now we can select this part and delete it. For the highlight, let's duplicate the yellow path again and make it white. Then let's inset it a few times by pressing Control plus the 9 key. Now let's duplicate the yellow path again. Rotate it clockwise a bit. And move it down into the left some. Then shift click the white path and do a difference. And again we can do break apart. Then delete this piece. Okay let's select everything. And duplicate it with control D. Then flip it horizontally by pressing the H key. And move it over here. Let's also shrink it in just a bit and rotate it some. We can also rotate the other half if we want. Alright, just to make it so the lemon peel doesn't look so smooth, we can add some random spots with the circles and ellipses tool. Finally, let's get the limit a couple leaves. For this, let's first switch to the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and create a circle. Let's give it a green fill. Let's also lower the opacity some for the moment. Now let's switch to the select tool and duplicate the circle, then hold control and bring it to the right until we have a leaf shape in the center. Okay, to get just the center part, we can select both circles and go to Path, Intersection. Let's raise the opacity all the way up. I'm also going to switch to the Node tool by pressing the N key and adjust the nodes a bit. I'll turn this node into a smooth node by clicking this button up here, drag it to the left some, and adjust the curves. Now let's switch to the Select tool and duplicate this path. Let's make it a lighter green. Then do inset a few times by pressing Ctrl plus the 9 key. Okay, we can also add a shadow and highlight to the leaf like we did with the lemon. For the shadow, let's duplicate the light green path. Let's make it a bit darker. Now let's duplicate it again. Make this one any color. Let's hold control and move it to the right some. Let's also rotate it counterclockwise a bit. Now we can zoom in some by holding control and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Then let's hold shift and select the other path and do a difference with control minus. And we can do break apart with shift control K, then delete this extra part. For the highlight, let's duplicate the light green path again, make it white, and inset it a few times. Now let's duplicate again, make it any color, and rotate it counterclockwise. Now we can shift click the white path and do a difference. And again we can do break apart with shift control K and delete this extra piece down here. Okay now we can select all of the leaf pieces, rotate them some, And move them into place. Now let's duplicate these, bring it down here, rotate it some more, then shrink it down some while holding shift and control. Now let's click this button up here to put this leaf under the lemon. And for this leaf, let's delete the shadow path here, then select the light green path, switch to the color picker tool by pressing D, 
and make it the color of the other leaf shadow. Now let's select the highlight and use the color picker tool to make it the light green. Okay, to finish up, let's select all of the parts on the left. Let's group them with Control G. Let's do the same for the other half. Now we can select both groups, go to the Align and Distribute dialog, and click this button to align the bottoms. Okay, that's how we can create a limit in Inkscape. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.